Good afternoon, everybody. Frankie Day for Frankie Day Models. Topic for this afternoon's video is video number two for Charlie Max and Bilge Rats and uh, Chief Boss's mate Frankie Day's USS Lexington group build featuring my F3F1 flying barrel. Okay, guys. Uh, the reason I'm getting hot on these uh, on this group build is because I want to get this one group build out of the way so I can jump on the others and and just it's just my it's just my format how I want to do it. And uh, so far I put a pretty good dent in. I gotta hop on the Lady Lex. That'd be next. So I'd like to go ahead and finish this up. She's almost about done, guys. I've been on this thing all day and all night last night. And uh, all that's left is just the, just the remainder of the rigging, undercarriage. Tap at the covers, tail wheel, and uh, that's about it. She's put, and she's uh, about uh, about done. And uh, definitely an F3F. Okay, uh, the Flying Barrel, Grumman Aircraft Company. Yes, sir. That was the uh, Flying Barrel. Uh, the F, the F3F uh, series uh, arrived from the F, F2F. Uh, series and all the FF1. Uh, during the 1930s the Navy was uh, more or less ex more or less uh, I, would, I would say experimenting more or less uh, progressing into a different type of aircraft. So all about a cold fuselage using uh, a mixture of materials of uh, canvas, uh, aluminum and, and uh, wood. And uh, Aviation, naval aviation back in the 1930s was was primarily experimental. Uh, they had a lot of, ma of manufacturers out there that were like trying to get government contracts from the Army Air Force Corps and the United States Navy back in those days. And uh, so the F 3F series kind of filled the bill for the United States Navy. It was the last of the shipboard carrier based biplane uh, fighters. And uh, by 1941, they were. No longer. What they had left, they went to San Diego, this I do know. They had squadrons and also carrier squadrons of them that they're just laying up there the grinders ready to be dismantled or <clears throat> or something done to them. So with all that with all these aircraft in the way, with war with war being intimate and more better aircraft coming out, the aircraft was actually rendered obsolete. And uh, at the time of the, of, the, of the construction of this aircraft, when it was on the drawing board at the time, war was not intimate. It was just another milestone of uh, progress of state of art aviation. And uh, so they had a lot of aviation designers back in the days that designed things we're flying today that came from the Second World War. And uh, so the Gumman Barrel, Flying Barrel, was a, a very unique biplane that featured the retractable landing gear. Uh, they had no hydraulic in those days. Hydraulic uh, systems wasn't, uh, it was probably realized, but they were incorporated in the actual aircraft. Anything to do with tractable aircraft was, was actually was mechanically uh, operated by using a handle. Kind of like the old fashioned, kind of like the old fashioned uh, window inside your car. When you raise your window, it will lower it. And uh, it, takes, it requires uh, 29 cranks, and you got a locking pin, so you got to crank that that handle 29 times, and that and that, and that landing gear will just uh, close upside the fuselage very slow, as if it was uh, hydraulic. But one thing was sure, it costs John there. You got to make sure when you don't leave your hand out that handle because gravity prevails. The wheels, the way the wheels will fall down like that, you can, you can snap your oleo, your tracky linkage. Because they had a chain that worked on a sprocket against the firewall behind the undercarriage. Behind that was a firewall for the, uh, between the engine and also the uh, instrument panel. Uh, they were, these things were used as more or less as target to, uh, towing of planes uh, and maneuvers. And uh, they were they were very fast. They can go they can go pretty almost up to 300 miles an hour. That's pretty fast for a biplane. Uh, I believe she had a 700 horsepower right cyclone or a right whirlwind engine. I think they had in them. That's why it had a Kaufman starter. Looked like an oversized 
shotgun shell. They stick it in that chamber. They lock that, that compressing cap on it. And they hit it and pow! And that prop will spin around and the engine will start up. And even the old C-119 plane boxcars and the C-182 C-82 uh, packet planes uh, during the Air Force during uh, postal wars, uh, they had Kaufman starters on there. And uh, so that was actually a, a form of starting engine was because they didn't have no electric uh, uh, starting systems like they had as, as the war during the war. But uh, these things were actually they're primitive, and they were very beautiful airplanes, very colorful for their for their day. And the uh, I've always liked the F3F. Yeah. It's, it's a very beautiful looking airplane. So this is all paper, as you've seen on video number one. We're gonna come over and take a look at the flying barrel right here, guys. Ah, she got some wings on. She can fly. I'm starting on the rigging right there, guys. You may see some of that rigging. Well, I'll swing this uh, bundle of tape around a little bit. Maybe you can you can see a little bit of the, what I've done on it. All the ribs, all these ribs have been all recessed. Like I said, when I, when I, when I built the kit, I turned to put the pendant side down and took the straight edge. I took the straight edge and um, I went ahead and uh, scored lines like all these simulated ribs in the inside and printed them with a paint with a I use a an ink pen and a straight edge and went back over the lines from the inside of the paper and, it, and the ribs popped out so that's kind of like a trick with card models and uh, canopy was done with a uh, packing tape like everybody says what the heck is packing tape right well, Frank and has got it right here for you, boys. You can buy this stuff. General Dollar Stores, where I got this from. Any store. These make excellent canopies. As you can see right here. Now, when it comes to jets, it's a different thing. You can't use them on jets because uh, jets, because the bubble canopies on jets there, they're a lot different. So you got to vacuum form yourself. Like, this is card models only I'm talking about. On jets, you got to vacuum form your own... Uh, canopy or you can buy it by the company by the manufacturer okay and uh, it's going pretty good guys I, I, I enjoy this flying barrel it's a very beautiful looking airplane I took my time on this thing and put a lot of hours in it looks more like it's plastic more than paper and uh, right now I'm working on the um, the tablet covers. These little card outs look like hearts right here. As you see, I put them on here. I got about maybe 10 more to go on this thing. And they all go around there's little ovals around the canopy here around the cowling last thing i do in this thing is the engine and uh, everybody says well where's the engine parts at well here they are right here right here is a prop And these part of your engines is you just pop your spinner right here. Hits on the prop right here. These are just cylinder heads right here, all these little discs. They all got to be backed up with cardboard. Set just pieces of board like this. Glue on there, take a hole puncher, punch these things out. And you make a bunch of cylinders. And I got a bunch more right here. Here's all your engine parts right here, fellas. That'd be the last thing I'd be doing on this thing. Okay, we'll bring it back to us truly. Okay, take the flying barrel, put it over here, because Frank and Dave's got things to do and places to go. I can't uh, be on the bench on this for a while. I'll resume later on, but right now, I get this video underway so I get something going here. 
Okay, this is in the video two for the uh, the flying barrel, and uh, I should have this thing done probably by uh, Saturday. This Saturday I have the final reveal. I'll take it outside, take some nice outside pictures, and I'll post them on Facebook on the uh, Airfix modeling page, I believe it is. You'll see if you guys venture into Facebook. Uh, We'll talk about Facebook. I see stuff in there that how humanity can lower themselves. I think Mr. Chris Chapman, he had a, some beautiful looking flowers, big old pots. Those pots probably about maybe maybe two feet tall, probably about a good maybe 18 inches of diameter. Nice looking planter pots. Must have been about five or six, seven, I don't know how many. And they had a bunch of these infidel schoolgirls. And uh, right in broad daylight, I went up there and stole them off the porch with a camera right on them. I showed that to my wife. And she said, Boy, Frank, this is ridiculous. This is a You new young generation. When you're raised with failed parenthood and a failed education system, this is what you get. And uh, actually, they're hurting themselves. They just don't realize it yet. And, uh, and their parents should be flogged for when they raise them. Because I don't care what anybody says. It starts at home. Family values, right from wrong, discipline, dignity, pride, respect, all these all these fine ingredients that makes a fine human being into the productive society we live in today come from home. To my personal observation, at 77 years of my life, all these qualities are gone. They went out with a dodo. It's very tragic and very sorry, and very sad. So, that's what you got to deal with in, in life. Well, that's him, and this is me, Frankie Day. I love my models. And I love you guys. Time for you to sign off. And, uh, next video is going to probably be the final reveal on this. Now I'm going to start hopping on the Lady Lex. I got the flight deck done with Lady Lex. I might be able to throw you a little sneak review of this right now. How much I got done on it. Come on, girl. You're being uh, summons. I got the flight deck on this thing. This has been glued down yet, but this has, this portion has. Get a little higher so you guys can see it a little bit. I got the deck on there. It's glued up pretty straight. Good. This thing come out really nice. Really nice. So I'll be getting hot on this when I finish that. Now I finish this. I'll be on the USS Lexington by Trumpeter 1 through 50 scale. That was given to me by our beloved Mr. Freddie DeWarte. And uh, thank you, Freddie. He's a wonderful man, this, this fella is. I like to hug him and shake his hand if I see him in the flesh. And you too. Okay, it's time for Frankie Day to bail out of here right now. It's Thursday. Like I said, I got places to go and things to do. Here ain't one of them. Just enough time to make a video here so we keep you guys amused and interested. And I gotta go onward and take care of my business. And the business of this is getting it done. Okay. This is Frankie Day for Frankie Day Model signing off. Again, make Mama happy always. Keep your affairs in order. Spend wisely. Keep yourself focused on the road. And take care of your family, your babies, yourself. Model on, get kit nuts. Just build away, enjoy this beautiful, beautiful summer we're going to be having here. And uh, that reminds me, I got some RC toys I got to start getting spruced up before before the summer's over with. <laughs> I got to do some, some sailing with my sailboat. I'll probably make a couple videos of that. You guys would like that too. Okay, let's break your day out of here. You guys take care, boys. You guys take the rest of the day off. And uh, God bless you guys. I love you guys very much. And thank you very much for your wonderful comments. 
and everything you guys do is I'm very very much appreciated and uh, you guys are my family and I love you guys and you guys take care and take care of your children and take care of your babies and make mama happy and we'll catch you on the final reveal for the F3F flying barrel bye boys Frank and Dagon